even when I'm driving here, the, the stars I can see in the sky is crazy. Like. Yo guys, what's up? So today the plan is to drive to Mount Aragal in Donegal. Um, it's about a three hour drive from here. There's a Milky Way panorama arch that I have wanted to get there for uh, like about a year now at least. Tonight, as you can see, very clear skies. Hopefully it stays this way. Even in Donegal it's meant to be clear. Um, the, it's new moon, so there's no moon in the sky to ruin the shots. There is, however, a time constraint. Uh, Milky Way still rises quite late in the night, just before the twilight kicks in. Twilight starts to kick in at about 5 a.m. So I want to get this core as high as possible before then. Um, I'll start shooting the shots at about half four, but the panorama, even at 20 mil, is going to take like 10, 10 shots at least. So. I get about three minutes of exposure on each up to half an hour, so it'll be tight, but let's just hope it um, stays clear. <laughs> I also have a five-star Airbnb for tonight. Right in the back there. Um, yeah, this will be fun. I've brought a lot of warm clothes with me because the thing with this car is the heating kind of doesn't work properly. <laughs> so I don't have that to fall back on. <laughs> oh, geez, I hope this works. So I actually did come here in the summertime and record some footage for a vlog I was going to make. Um, except the composition that time was different. It was a uh, southwest kind of composition facing for, for the end of summer. But uh, just due to the bad weather in the summer in August, I never actually got that shot. So I can't remember if I recorded any footage to plan this arch panorama or not. But I'll show some of that footage from that hike anyway. Ooh. So, close to the top of Aragal now, it's quite a steep climb, as you can see. <laughs> what do you have to say, Forty? My uh, feet are actually dry now, after that hectic start, so... <laughs> I've made a quick stop off in Derry, London Derry, whatever you, whatever you want to say, um, just to see my friend uh, Forty. So, see if he wants to come with us. Well, Forty, welcome to my humble bus. <laughs> sure, you don't want to join me tonight? Uh, I don't know. I, we'll see how I feel after after food. Uh, I got a notification on my phone. There's a chance of a roar tonight as well. So, I mean, we will we will be cozy together, and that. Um, single <laughs> sleeping bag idea, are not we? <laughs> Just had a lovely dinner with Forty, and now I'm gonna head out to Aragal. Forty's mm -hmm. gonna enjoy his rocket beach. I wanna enjoy the heat and warmth. Yeah. And shelter. Kinda wish I could be staying in, but oh well. Forty, give me a wee serenade off. <laughs> Yo, what's up? So I'm pretty much kind of right beside Aragal. I'm probably about five minutes away from the place where I'll park up at Aragal, maybe. And then the lake is about another five minutes past that. But um, I'm just kind of stopping here in the middle of this road, in the middle of the Glen Vaux National Park, I think it's called. I don't really know how to pronounce it, but um, like even when I'm driving here, the the stars I can see in the sky is crazy. Like, let's see. Oh, 
I'm on this road just leading up towards Ergil and honestly instead of waiting for a Gunnar, or I have like a good few hours to wait so I'm going to see if I can grab a, a winter kind of Orion side Milky Way arch in the west here because I might as well and I've seen like one car along this road so hopefully Ooh, okay, so I spent the past like hour um, taking that kind of westerly facing uh, winter Milky Way arch from pretty much Orion Canis Major over down into where Cygnus is set for underneath the horizon. But uh, yeah, I noticed in one of the photos for that panorama that I caught a little bit of Aurora in the north. That was the official first time I've ever caught the Aurora on camera. I can just about see it with the naked eye. It's just like a faint glow. I can't really notice it, but on on the camera shot, you can see that green glow. So it's not much, but that's the first time I've captured the Aurora Borealis. So. Okay, so I've done my little bit of reconnaissance down at the spot I want to take the shots at in about less than four hours time actually, less than, four, less than three hours time. Like, <laughs> So I've just drove up the mountain a bit more, kind of into the darkness again just so I can maybe try and get a few hours sleep in my, in my awesome Airbnb right behind me. <laughs> Ooh. Well. That is me going to get a few hours sleep, hopefully. Um, yeah. Tend to take this thick hoodie off because it's really bulky and the car isn't really that cold yet. But we'll see how it goes. Some people probably think I'm insane for doing stuff like this, but uh, you know, whenever you see the the night sky, like just the beautiful dark night sky and proper dark proper dark sky places um with no light pollution and when it's clear it's just it's amazing it makes the all the hours of driving and the sleeping in the back of your car worth it so i really hope i really really hope in a few hours that it's still clear and i can get the shots that i really want to try and get here so We'll see what happens. Hello, hello. Good morning. I think I got about um, one hour, one hour and a half sleep maybe, so it wasn't too bad, but it's definitely not um, a full night's sleep. <laughs> it's uh, just gone 3.30 now, so I'm gonna start getting some things prepped, maybe head down to the spot. I plan to start shooting at about 4, 20 past four, so. so I've got time still. I don't have to be in a rush or anything. And get some tea in the meantime, try and keep my energy levels up. <laughs> Just back from probably about nearly an hour and a half, two hours of uh, photographing. That that um, yeah, probably about an hour and a half of um, photographing. That took uh, a lot of work. That pano, but I I really hope it um, stitches together well and it looks as awesome as what I, I think it will in my head. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, 
Oh, the pano itself, like the sky, took about 40 minutes to do. Um, took about 10 shots in um, portrait orientation at 20 mil, and each shot was two minutes long exposure, and I took two of each to stack for noise reduction, so 40 minutes in the sky, and then turned the tracker off. Um, same thing, but the opposite way, except I don't want exposure, so for the foregrounds. Um, so one, one two minute exposure for each panel of the foreground, that was 10. I think I'd, uh, I'd probably done a bit more, probably done about 12, so that's another like half an hour out of shooting so I hope, it, I hope it all gets put together well. It definitely got colder like there was just a constant wind coming off that lake like I'm freezing now. Um, I was thinking about staying for sunrise but I don't know if I can be bothered. <laughs> I really would like to just go home and go to bed for a little bit. Um, I'll start driving home and I'll see what it looks like. I'll see what happens. Maybe I'll go somewhere. Maybe I won't. Either way, I've got three hours driving ahead of me, so I'm gonna get going. Um, yeah, catch you in the next one. Peace. So from the time I uploaded my finished photo on my Instagram and other social media, I have actually had a lot of people ask me what my setup was for the panorama and just how I went about actually shooting all the shots and dealing with the time constraints. So I thought I would record a little bit extra on this video and just show you my setup really and how I actually went about getting the shots. Basically I've got my tripod, just a, your basic tripod really, there's nothing amazing about this. Um, and what I've got is the Benro geared head on top of it. I'll make sure that the spirit level is level, so I have a nice even level base to begin with. So that pretty much everything I do after that will be straight and level. So once I've made sure that's level, I will attach my Move Shoot Move Star Tracker to the top. I'll get it in kind of the general direction of which way uh, the North Star or Polaris will be. I will then attach the Z bracket from Move Shoot Move with a ball head on top of the star tracker. That way I can, once it's uh, polar aligned, I can have a nice level base again to start with. For all my shots, I only ever use a the laser as a laser alignment for polar alignment. Um, I use another app called Polar Clock, which is very helpful to see exactly where to aim the laser because Polaris orbits or rotates around the North Celestial Pole. I'll pull our line once I have everything on top, even the camera, but I only have one camera, which I'm using to record right now, so for the sake of this, just pretend the camera's on top. I will get my uh, composition, I'll start tracking. I know I've got a, a nice level base here, so I can pretty much pan this head round get my pano shot each time moving this round, keeping it level. Now you may be asking, yes, this will over time rotate. This Z bracket over time will rotate this way due to the star tracker tracking. I will just slightly adjust it back to being straight and level and that shouldn't affect the composition of the pano too much. Um, that is it really, that is basically my setup I use to capture um, the image. Um, I know there's a lot of things I could add to this setup to make it more efficient and reliable and repeatable, but uh, I just don't have them yet. Like, just a very basic overview of how I do things. Um, yeah, a lot of people have been asking me, you know, how do I stitch it together? What software do I use? Um, does it always work well? Um, Pretty much, I, I use Photoshop and Lightroom. Most of the time, putting the files into Photoshop and letting it automate it into a panorama will work pretty much 100% of the time for me. So I hope it was partly helpful. Um, let me know if you have any questions and 
yeah, just good luck. Peace. One thing I will say is I made the sky panorama and the foreground panorama separate. So I'll stitch all of the sky together first and then all of the foreground and then blend them together with layer masks in Photoshop. It's definitely best to do it that way rather than some other insane way. Like that, that's the best way in my head to, to do it and it works for me, so.